I'm on a journey to get better, and I want to do it with you. And I'm not just focusing on physical health. I'm focusing on everything, emotional wellness, spirituality, finances, relationships, and so much more. Every week, it will be my personal goal to bring us, the world's leading healers, experts, and game changers, to share groundbreaking secrets and tips to getting better in all areas of life. Getting better isn't easy, but it's a whole lot easier when we can do it together. Welcome to Better Together with me, Maria Menudos. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Better Together. I hope you all had a great weekend, despite what's going on out there. Um, we are here because when you know better, you get better. And so today we're going to know better when it comes to pets and the coronavirus and get better in that aspect. And um, I think it's really important for us to know how this affects our pets and how our pets can affect us. And so I called on um, a friend, Dr. Barbara Royal, who is, uh, gosh, gangster veterinarian in this world. She's Oprah's veterinarian. That's course everyone's claim to fame if they have had (laughs) any interaction with oprah it's like she's oprah's trainer she's this um but dr royal has extensive experience in veterinary (laughs) care including zoo and marine and wildlife animals um of course she's the go-to veterinarian for oprah winfrey she's a national published author she's graduated high honors from the university of illinois um and she's just amazing we've had her on the show before and i thought who better to come on and explain to us how this um affects us and our pets. Meanwhile, I will tell you, we have started doing this show every day and we're grateful for all of you guys joining because I'm trying to create a a nice positive space. Speaking of pets, um, Winnie, Stephen, if you'd cut to Winnie, Winnie is our special guest today and she's being a little bitch over there barking. You shush, young lady. No, you shush. Mama's not going to take your guff. (laughs) <laughs> of course this is what Winnie does when I'm talking Winnie stop it <laughs> see now we play like this but if I get really loud she'll stop but I don't want to get really loud in your ears anyhow hopefully she'll stop anyhow um what I wanted to share with you guys is that we are trying to create a positive space in these very dark moments and times because if you are glued to the news you will more than likely get depressed you will more than likely start to feel ill. Um, I know my best friend is like, I can't eat. Other friends can't sleep. Other friends are going crazy in quarantine. I'm like, guys, we've just started. Like, you have to figure this out. Um, And uh, we have some tough times ahead. So I figured if we got together one hour a day together and chatted about these things and I can access all of these amazing experts to help us, then why not? Um, And I'm on my property safely in quarantine. Steven is safely quarantined in his little engineer booth over there. Right, yes, Steven? I am. I am <laughs> I am not coming anywhere near you. He's not allowed to come in here. He's not allowed to touch anything. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I, I switched my mindset a little bit, and I hope this will help you. Um, rather than focusing on what is, which I do deal with what is when I have to deal with what is, Um, but I've really started to switch my mindset to what I desire this outcome to be, because I feel like I had to get into such a, a doom and gloom place to get people to take this seriously and to be prepared. And I started to feel that and started to get knots in my stomach. And yes, we are in for some scary times. However, if we go back to our Esther Hicks training and all of the great kind of spiritual guides and gurus that we've worked with along the way on the show and in our lives individually, knowing that focusing on what we desire helps attract that is really important. And it was funny this morning, I was listening to Esther Hicks as I was getting ready. And she was saying that thoughts have more power and impact than we give credit. Don't offer thoughts in response to what we're observing, which is important, right? If you can, Uh, If thoughts are powerful and you're mostly focusing on what is, then you're squandering your power by staying the same. Be more discriminating about the beliefs that you hold. Um, She also said you have the ability to focus otherwise. Focus on specifics of what you desire, not what is. And so if you can take that today and start to shift your attention away from the doom and gloom and, you know, all of the pains that are associated with what's happening and start to try to manifest what you would prefer 
um, you'll see that it will it will make a difference. It's just you can't have that block up. You can't. You have to really believe. And so I see the reaction very quickly in my life when I do it. And you know, I mean, we were just about to go out for investors for investment for our company, and I was like, well, that's down the toilet. And then I started continuing my meditation at night, asking for amazing collaborators and partners and investors to continue to flow into my life. And then the next day I had a conversation with somebody and it was the complete opposite. And you're like, wait, I thought this was over. And they're like, no, this is actually the best time. And so it can, it can work. And for, um, our diehards out there, you know, it works. Um, so try to spread that message because I think it's a definite, it's definitely better to live in that world as the rest of the world is getting figured out. Um, I saw today that, you know, the DWP, all these different organizations are coming together to allow people to not have to worry about making payments on power and water and rent and things like that. So things are getting handled. It's scary and it's uncertain, but as Tony Robbins says, life is about how much uncertainty you can handle. Um, and we just have to really, really take seriously this quarantining and the social distancing because, you know, I'm, I'm on CNN's website right now. And the first thing I saw right before the show started was this is what happened when Hong Kong let its guard down just a week ago. The city seemed like a model for how to contain the novel coronavirus. Then it all changed. I haven't read the article, but it seems as if they're saying they let their guard down and started going out. And when you think Stephen? Yeah, I mean, I have I have friends that are in China right now, and they say that it's kind of a very weird dynamic, because, and this is this is why it's going to hit us so much harder is they already have a culture that's focused on wearing face masks because when SARS came around, people are still a little bit shell shocked from oh, it, yeah. and a lot of people kind of have calmed down on their uh, uh, timidness and needing to wear masks since the SARS outbreak, but this has just refreshed that in their mind. So like when, when this happened, everyone just jumped right back on the train of where they were at before with SARS. And now you're having a lot of people, a lot less outbreaks, a lot less people actually um, infecting others because everyone's so already used to wearing masks. Now America, on the other hand, is not used to that. America, on the other hand, looks down on that. So we have people in Florida partying all over the place. We have kind of a lot of stuff like that going down. So yeah. that's, it's, it's going to be a series of things escalating, things coming down, things escalating, things coming down. And my friend's like, oh yeah, well, it'll be gone by summer. I'm like, it'll be gone enough by summer that people do stupid stuff and make it come back. Yeah. I heard that it could come back in September that they think we'll have it under control and then we're probably going to rush out too quick and then it'll come back. Um, you know, there was an epidemiologist I was reading about this weekend that said, if we all like hardcore for eight weeks, all stayed inside, then we could eradicate this. It would but, die. Yeah. But no one's going to do that. And, you know, the other thing that I was mentioning, I think the other day, but Kevin had a great point. We, we decided we were going to go for a ride and just, you know, get out of the house. And he's like, oh my gosh, this is so responsible. And I go, why? I go, we can be outside. We just can't be around people. And he's like, Maria, if we get into a car accident right now, or if something happens with a car and it breaks down, either the tow trucker is going to be, you know, be at risk or, you know, an EMT. And I was like, damn, I didn't think about that. But um, but you do have to think about your actions and the repercussions right now on the other people. And that's really hard in a me, me, me society um, to to get through certain people's heads. I mean, here's the thing that's kind of crazy to me is I don't think people realize how much it takes to keep this country going. <sighs> like, you know, you look at you look at all of these jobs that you don't necessarily think are that important at the time. But. Right, everything right now we have the highest amount of bandwidth taxing on the internet across the country across the globe right now and we have jobs that are considered essential and non-essential right mm -hmm. so when you think of what's essential and what's non-essential you would think of okay well you want the per people doing garbage right you want i thought about them first yeah, so like, i was like you want thank to god you you need your garbage pickup because yep. Even our garbage is picking up so quickly, right? You also want to think about, okay, uh, hospitals. Mm -hmm. They need to stay open. What you're not thinking about is every single gas station, 
and every single gas station has somebody handling money from people on a daily basis. Yep. And then what you're not thinking of is, okay, we want internet to work. Well, how does the internet work unless we have teams of people actually managing it and dealing with the overabundance of calls for customer support right now? And how is customer support set up? Customer support is set up in a way that everyone's in cubicles talking to people on phones. Yep. So you have tons and tons and tons of people in a in a room to keep the internet going, which could potentially be another point for app break. Like looking through the stay it's, at home orders, yeah. there's everything fits under what they say is essential. It's crazy. I know Ev because everything is job, essential. You can make any job pigeonhole. We need our it. internet. We need our grocery stores. We need so many things. It's really hard. Um I think I think you really start to realize how complicated our lives are and um, and how amazing they are. How amazing they are, right? We're <laughs> just the fact that everyone's already losing their minds in quarantine. Listen, I understand if you're in a small space that I totally get. And if you don't like yourself. If you don't like yourself or if you don't like your partner, it's going to get really real. But we're going to have experts for that. And um, and I'm focusing on a swift resolution for this. I pray for it all day, every night. And I am manifesting that to happen um, because I think that we can. But before we continue chatting about this, I want to get to Dr. Barbara Royal because I know so many pet owners like myself are wondering how to be careful um, around our pets and if they're safe. And I want to make sure that we're safe either way, right? Like if I'm hugging Winnie, I want to make sure I'm not passing something on for when my mom hugs Winnie. So today we got Dr. Barbara Royal. She's going to be answering these questions for us. Um, Stephen, do we have her on the line? Okay. Can we get her on the line? I've been trying. Yeah. We're, we're, we're getting it. Uh, we're trying to get the zoom going. Oh. We talked about why it's not really good to go cruising in your car. Yeah. We discussed that, honey. We did. It was a great point. You know, um, Someone someone texted me this morning, and I'm back to reading my texts in the morning, unfortunately. But um, someone texted me this morning, and I don't know. I think it was in Greece. They have a 150 euro fine if you're not at the grocery store or the pharmacy, um, and the, you know, really trying to keep well, people locked up. Certain governments have more control over their people, you know, and they'll and those certain governments will make those tough decisions. I'm saying Greece will or won't, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is where, unfortunately, we're probably going to have to have our rights infringed upon a little bit. I mean, there was a great, um, I think it was Canada that was reporting, and I believe it was one of the one of the cabinet members at cabinet was telling everyone, it's like, look, like, the more that people ignore the orders we're putting out, the more we have to put out more stringent rights infringing orders. Because if everyone just went home and did what people asked right now, this would this would all blow over after we do it. But because people are ignoring it, then they're going to have to be more and more strict until people do. I yeah. see it as a curfew is probably next. 8 p.m. curfew in California is probably next. Oh, yeah. And then after that, it's probably going to be, obviously, Trump already yesterday announced that he deployed the National Guard to New York and California and I believe Washington. And they're going to be locking down every single major intersection, most likely. Wow. So. Um, meanwhile, um I think that you know we haven't we haven't gotten to the worst of this. Um, worst is behind us. <laughs> I sure hope so. No, I sure hope so, but I I don't think that's the case. No, I mean, there's um, going to be just just economically there's ramifications. But I do think that we can um, really focus on the positives that can come from this, like. I'm noticing every day different things that are happening in our lives where I'm having more time with my dad, even six feet away. I'm keeping my distance from my mom and dad. I'm keeping my distance from you. Poor Kevin's not getting any nookie nookie. Um. <laughs> I want everyone, all the males out there to know you porn is still working, streaming, <laughs> streaming very nicely. Steven. Um, no, because... He was up in the stores, like grocery shopping for us. So he's compromised. I have to be careful not to catch it from you to give it to my mom and my dad. So anyhow, um, we had like a scare this weekend where my dad, well, the first scare was my dad shaved his head, probably because he was stressed about how he was going to get his hair cut and didn't realize that we could probably just cut it for him. I was going to cut it for him. I know how to cut it. And so... 
I walk into my kitchen and my dad's got like a poof of hair over here and like a poof back here. He like just started shaving. It was like the little himself. kid that like just just yeah. went crazy. And so yeah, only half his hair was left. Yeah. So Kevin shaved the rest of it anyway. Then Kevin was like, "Well, your head's so white. Let me put some tanner on you." And so he put some tanner on him. And later he's like, "I'm really dizzy." And, um, I started to freak out. And so I texted my doctor and he's like, take his blood pressure. Luckily I have a blood pressure machine at home because of my mom. And so I'm taking his blood pressure and it's like really bad. And then his temperature is really bad, but it wasn't high. It was like super low, but they're all digital. And these stupid digital things do not work. So every time I ran a test on myself or Kevin, it was like a completely different number and it wasn't, it wasn't because it was us. It was like I would run mine and, you know, mine and Kevin's multiple times and it would be different every time for us too. So I was having a heart attack, but, um, but I think we're going to have to, um, really start thinking about, you know, how we're going to handle those tough moments. But in the meantime, where I was going with this was, um, and then the haircut kind of threw me off track is, being around my dad now, I'm getting to see where he's going wrong with his blood sugar levels, where he's not focusing at every meal on eating protein, carbs, and fat to sustain his blood sugars. He's eating just vegetables, and then his sugar is dropping, and then he's drinking orange juice, and then it's spiking, and then it's dropping back down. And so I'm able to kind of guide him, whereas my mom, it sounded like he was, she was needling him, right? Like as a couple, if I tell you something, you're, I'm nagging you. It's the same thing. So he tuned her out long ago. And so um, one of the benefits of this is I'm going to get my dad's blood sugar to be in tip-top shape. I know it. I can already see his his night levels are getting better because he's he's trusting the and process. And I'm going to get jacked. And P.S., if you are, have a diabetic in your life, the Tandem um, T-Connect it has a control IQ upgrade setting that really manages your blood sugar for you and is incredible. And so I had to download the software and set it all up for him, but it's pretty amazing. And so that was a benefit. And then the other thing was like, I'm back to like cooking again, which is fun. It's creative for me. I love it. Um, You're laughing at me, but like yesterday I was like, oh, I bought frozen shrimp. So I made um, like a lemon garlic shrimp with pasta al dente you said because i guess i didn't cook it long enough <laughs> but it was delicious did some sliced lemon on there some crushed red pepper a little butter and olive oil it was fun and like the other day i made um, you know lettuce most tacos fun about it? what when you don't have to clean it up yeah well that's why i have you i know that's why i hate your cooking i'm the cooker you're the cleaner i made you delicious hot dog sandwiches yesterday those were nice those were pretty damn good what about that garlic dip the garlic dip was powerful. I need to try that. I saw you guys make that. I was the like, the garlic I need to try dip that. will kill anything. I bet it is the coronavirus cure. That shit, I mean, it burns holes right down your everything. I think that would have a very good effect. But um, but yeah, I'm like, I'm cooking, I'm organizing, I'm cleaning up stuff. And, you know, if we can just focus on how to make use of this time rather than complaining or rather than just Panic. Sitting on the couch watching TV all day, I think it'll be or panicking and and definitely trying not to panic. Which I did panic with my dad for the well, not totally. I wasn't at a ten. I was at a seven. I was nervous, but um, it looks like we got Doctor Royal on. Can you hear me, Doctor Royal? Hello. Hi. Yes. Yay. Oh, How's your family? What's happening? Everybody's good here. Thank goodness. How about you? Good. We're sort of holding up. We've got a farm, an organic farm in Michigan, so we're just like here and i'm i my clinic is still open i've been a little bit back and forth but how are you handling having the clinic open in these times it's really tricky because we're not given any of the protective gear or anything that i mean not like human medicine is being given protective gear either actually so nobody's having it but um it's just weird so we've been doing drop off at the curb phone consults, doing everything on, you know, Skype or Zoom or whatever. And then um, I'm just talking to people as, as we go. I'm doing, when I'm here, I'm doing tele, telemedicine, basically. Got it. And okay. That makes sense. The clinic, they get, you know, I've got luckily a pretty young staff. <laughs> so they're in there doing the blood work and x-rays for me, send it to me. I take a look. I try to get someone to, you know, hands on. It's crazy. Yeah. I wonder, can't you order the N95 masks for yourselves? They are unavailable anywhere. 
Okay, well, I'm going to connect you with Miss Bethany Frankel so you can order some for yourselves because she's got a manufacturer and we've been raising money and sending them to different hospitals. Right. So um, she has a manufacturer that's doing them in three to five days. Really? Mm hmm I would love that contact. I just feel terrible for my staff. <clears throat> They're so stressed out and everybody, I mean, we're still in contact with people. You know, there's no way to do it. And the governor said that we're essential services, so we don't have the edict to close. Mm -hmm. so, you know, there we are. We're, we're open for business. We're doing what we can do. And yeah. the fact is, it's very hard not to take care of our patients. I mean, I have some critical things we have to deal with. You know? Yeah. Well, that's the thing that's tricky, right? Like, if you shut down, who's going to take care of the animals? I mean, that that is crushing as well. I know. And they're not stopping being ill and people are very worried about them. And you know, to worry about everything is just too overwhelming. Right. So, um, so I also wondered, and I'm going to write that in case, um, I forget, but I also wondered, has the state, um, has the state asked you guys for your ventilators yet? We don't have them. Oh, wow. We don't have that. We just have like, you know, we'll have an Ambu bag or something like that. Or I mean, the specialty clinics have them, but I don't know how they transfer over. I don't know what they're going to do with that. But Got it. I just, you know. Interesting. So let's talk about coronavirus and your pets. Can it be spread to your pets and can they spread it to you? Yeah. So right now, I don't think we really have enough information to know that, um, which is Damn. hard for everyone to deal with. But so far from what we're gathering, the, the tests that have you know, been done on, on a few pets that did come up positive for that, what they're testing things like saliva, you know, and, and the nasal swabs and things like that, where maybe they're in a home where there's coronavirus already, and that's why they're testing them. And so then they will find fragments of this. They don't know if they're live fragments. They don't know if they're infective. They don't know if the animal is just picking them up, but relatively immune or, or you know, the virus is just not affecting them. They have not shown any animals to be sick or coming down with illness from this, as far as I've known anywhere. And certainly none of the pets in my practice have been. Wow. Um, and because I feel like I've gotten mixed information about this, I've heard that they don't. But I also thought the same thing. I'm like, this is too early. I don't think people have gotten to the place where they're really studying if yeah. animals are transferring this. Because my biggest concern with two elderly people in my house and two compromised people, my mom with stage four cancer, my dad with type one diabetes is we're all hugging and kissing my dogs, right? Mm -hmm. We're all quarantined. I'm staying away from them. They have their part of, you know, the mm -hmm. house and we've got ours and we don't kind of go into their section. And, um, it, it's a little concerning. Like we're, we're hugging our German shepherd Maximus who you've, you've known cause yeah. you've helped us with him. Um, and I'm like, shit, if I'm kissing him and then my dad kisses him and I'm infected and I don't know, and I'm asymptomatic, where are we then? The issue with that is really just the idea of what's called a fomite. So a fomite can be, you know, I hand you a package and it's on, so it's on the package or it's on the animal. So it isn't even so much like, is it the dog carrying it? Is, is it the dog carrying it on their skin? Yes. Right? So, so those kinds of things are real. Um, I don't know that anyone has good information about how long it lives on X or Y surface. They've been trying to say on cardboard, it's this and on glass, it's this. And it's like, oh gosh, you know, they, it's not really known. You just have to be careful and, and rinse things down. We have been doing a quick wipe of the outsides of the dogs that have been coming in. And then after they leave us, we also do a quick wipe. With um, what? Wipe, we've been using, we have an essential oil combination that's pretty good. Um, so, and people can have maybe some of these things in their home. If you have oil of oregano, you can mix that with, um, you mix a spray bottle with, um, oil of oregano water, a little bit of alcohol to help it sort of mix in. And then you just shake it really well. And if, if you know, you can try to try a wipe down with something like that, how effective that is. Um, you know, I, I don't hundred percent know. I know oil of oregano is amazing at killing all kinds of stuff. There's also people have been buying thieves oil like mad. So that's been really hard to find. That's one of the ones that's an essential oil combination that um, I think they said, you know, bubonic plague times so we were using that to kill bubonic plague. Well, yeah, it's an incredibly effective um, cleaner that, you know, my house cleaner has been using it for years in our house. So there's, there's, those are really great. There's sprays from thieves oil and things. There's another one that I really like through the now supplement company, which is more, um, that's more of an organic company, which I like a lot. And they have something called nature's shield. 
I know that's been available for people to buy. Um, and you can mix the nature shield oils. It's an, it's an essential oil combination. Again, you can do that sort of same mix of, um, you know, with some water, some alcohol, and, um, you know, maybe a couple of cc's of the nature shield in, in a spray bottle and just shake it up so that it still smells pretty strong and use that as a, as a wipe across an animal in between people. Got it. So if I've got Lysol wipes <laughs> and they're not, and they've got fluffy fur, you can't do one of those wipes with them. Lysol and pine saw and some of those can be really toxic yeah. to dogs and certainly to cats. So you do have to be careful which things you're using. Um, like if you have a cat, you don't want to use tea tree oil. Um, some of those oils are really troublesome. The cats do pretty well with the combination of a very dilute um, oil of oregano or the thieves oil or the, um, the nature's shield from, from now. You know, so I have so much oregano in my garden. It started like growing like a weed at some point. So maybe I'll make some. Yeah. And you can do that. You can have it, have it, you know, soak in, in olive oil and get some of it out of that way so that you can, you dilute it a bit anyway. Um, so just you put it in there and it's, it'll start to smell. Um, usually people will tincture it a little bit first with some alcohol. Um, there's lots of different ways. There's a lot of stuff online on how to take an herb and turn it into a tincture. And then you can mix that in with either water or, you know, if you have, I mean, and people don't have rubbing alcohol or things like that, which is fine. But, you know, if you have vodka, you've got other things in your house, you can use a little bit of that as a, as a way to get the oil into the water mixture. So it, it pulls it through and makes it even. I mean, there's also mm -hmm. just the chlorhexidine, chlorhexiderm type, um, typical conventional um, anti antiseptics or betadine. I want what, what Oh, we just lost her a little bit. Oh, there's Sorry. also the chlora what? Chlorhex, chlorhex type um, surgical wipes and cleaners and betadine um, are the other surgical wipes and cleaners that you could get. And then there's all the different wipes. Again, they just, they just were gone off the shelf. Yep. Freaking out. So um, alcohol wipes, again, you know, a little bit of um, vodka mixed in with some water you know, one to 10, you know, so that you've got some alcohol in there, you can do a wipe down that way. There's a lot of ways you can do your best. You know, this is not a time when we're like, oh, this is perfect. It'll kill everything. It's like, I'm going to do my best because I'm locked in my home. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's all we can do. I mean, there's not much else mm -hmm. available to us. Um, do you foresee them closing veterinary clinics? I mean, for me, as I look kind of down the road and I see um, how little people are taking this seriously, um, I think at some point we're going to get even tighter with our measures. Yeah, I think um, it's a little bit of trouble. Um, there's a chance that we may have to cl um, close clinics and, and really do everything with telemedicine. I know a lot of a lot of the different doctors are. If if we have to, we have to. I mean it's a, it's a point at which we're trying to really stop this from becoming a, a, a huge health crisis. Like it is in Italy or, um, you know, as we're, as we're seeing in some of the other countries, it's, it's a problem and, and decreasing the amount of cases that come all at once is, is the key. Yeah. What else can we be doing to protect our animals right now from getting sick or having to see you? Right. Like I, I'm, thinking about everything now to keep them safe and healthy because we don't want any issues. Yeah. I mean, and that's, that's, that's a big part of all of this is, you know, keeping, keeping all of us a little bit um, sane is tricky when you're quarantined in. I, it is a good time to, to think about the basics for one, um, try to add a little bit of fresh food into their diet now and again. So if you're just, if you're in a place where you don't have a lot to feed your pet and you're feeding them just, you know, maybe kibble or something, and you're used to feeding something more fresh, even some of your leftovers, you know, as long as you think about them in terms of, is this something that would be appropriate for a dog or a cat? Is it a meat product? Is it something like that? Eggs, um, you know, goat cheese or cheese, you can do a little bit of that and give them something fresh. You don't want to cause a diarrhea situation in your home. So everything you're doing, if you haven't done it before, maybe you don't do it. Um, tiny amounts of things can make a difference that can feed good bacteria, keep things healthy. If you have healthy soil outside of you in your yard and you can get out into your yard, healthy soil, good microbes are actually really important right now. We're, we're sterilizing everything. And it's starting, I think it's starting to cause another problem is that we're creating too much of a sterile environment with all of our, you know, different types of hand sanitizers and everything else. 
after you've washed your hands when you've been out or been exposed to things or whatever, maybe try to have some good, you know, healthy organic or just not pesticide ridden soil and, you know, rub it on your hands. Um, put it, put some soil on you. And I have a lot of people taking some soil, putting it into a spray bottle, shaking up the spray bottle, same sort of thing. And then you just have a little bit of good microbes that you can just spritz on your hands, you know, whatever, and get it on your face. And good microbes actually are important as well. And we're, we're, we don't even know how much we're destroying right now in terms of the good stuff that fights our battles for us. Wow. So that, might help, help, that might help your pet as well. Just, you know, let them get out, let them roll in the dirt. If you can't do that, then spritz them with some a little bit of, you know, we call it just the soil water. That's that just doing. blew my mind, Stephen. I'm sure that that just like <laughs> totally was exciting to you. I mean, it's, it is, it is something to think about, right? Yeah. People don't really think about that too much where. Well, right you know, now we're trying to teach people to think more about keep being cleanly with oh, them, yeah. you know, being clean and sanitized because of how dangerous we are. We're going to teach people to actually be clean for the first time I in know, some right? cases, but now the people who were already ahead of this, and I know like our friend John Comerford was always like, you know, too much, you know, um, hand sanitizer is bad because you kill the good microbes. Like you said, Dr. Royal, Stephen, I'm sure like this is something that you've studied, I can tell. Yeah, I mean, this is something that, that affects a lot of people. I mean, it's the same, it's the same kind of concept it's as okay. why kids these days don't have the same kind of built up immune systems as they did. 20 years ago because they have more of a sheltered upbringing. They're not outside eating dirt as kids. They're not exposed to the microbes. They're not exposed mm -hmm. to the bacteria growing up. So they don't necessarily build those, uh, you know, resistances to those things. And that's why, you know, right now, like my biggest thing for this is like, is this going to change people's minds on how vaccines are? Because a <coughs> lot of people right now are anti-vax. You hear that term a lot. And, you know, without herd vaccinations and herd protection, like what happens when the coronavirus vaccine comes out? It's going to be some, like right now, people are kind of terrified of the thought of vaccinating their children on something from 30, 40 years ago. But now we're going to have an untested over a long period of time vaccine. Are people going to accept it and actually go with it to protect everyone? Or are they going to cause a whole controversy and keep this freaking thing going for another six months to 12 months because they don't trust the system? I mean, yeah. that's, that's really what I'm very worried about. Yeah, we've got, I mean, I think we have a lot of different types of misconceptions and, and problems with trusting the pharmaceutical industry just in general, right? So we have that problem. We've got um, people saying, you know, all, all bacteria is going to be bad. And, and that's not a really a great place to be. Again, we do need, we need good bacteria. We need things like that. And then the vaccine industry, they do tend to, you know, they'll, they'll just if it's something that can make a lot of money, somebody really wants to put this out. We have to make sure it is safe. We can't just start adding to our problems by having unsafe vaccines. A vaccine can help, absolutely. You know, I'm very, very interested in always using the most judiciously and, and safe, um, safely uh, tested vaccines and, and make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do. It's, it's a hard thing to do that when you're in a, in a, in a time crunch. Um, yeah. But I do believe that there's a way for them to sort of give us a little bit more confidence in what it is. Um, you know, certainly the dealing with a live virus is going to, you know, tends to be a little bit better than dealing with the killed virus, things like that, that people are saying, but you know, we're going to, we're going to have to look at what comes out Yeah. and, and we try to get the, get real scientists to talk about this and people who really know vaccines rather than have it be just another big hype. Um, cause that can be exhausting for everyone to even keep track of. Yeah. And we're going to have to trust those scientists. <laughs> yeah, you have to, you have to get a, a people where it can't just be like a person. We do need to have, it would be nice if there was a panel. It would be nice if there were people joining together across countries Yeah, um, and just feel the, the weight of that, because this is a global problem. We need a, we need a global solution, but in terms of the rest of the things like uh, for our pets right now and our you know, my, my dogs are here. There's my, there's my Tonka. Oh, Tonka. Uh, is that his tongue hanging out? Oh yeah. She, <laughs> she was from a rescue and she had been beaten really badly. So Aww. sad. That's why, but it's so cute now. We've forgotten sort of why. That <gasps> oh, <laughs> what a cutie. You can imagine all the fur going on here. I'm thinking, okay, what is she carrying around? And you know, if you're, if you're going from person to person, you have to think about that kind of thing you know, the, the little bit of a wipe down, that kind of stuff, if you're doing that and then, and making sure they're staying as healthy as they can stay just in case it's going to jump species, which I don't see happening. That's not going to be, you know, on my list at the moment anyway. Yeah. Um, 
and because it's already it's it's done what it's going to do now these coronaviruses we've dealt with a long time in veterinary medicine so this is not something that's terribly new to us um really yeah coronavirus is not this virus obviously but the fact that they're the coronavirus is is a is a minx um <laughs> it just um not in minxes but it's it's like a little um it's a very flexible very um impressive um, virus in general, all the coronaviruses, they do all kinds of different things. There's some that are very benign and there's some that are pretty um, horrifying. So dealing with that and knowing how difficult it's gonna be to do a vaccine for this is also part of what's going on in my head because they haven't developed great vaccines for a lot of different coronaviruses because they are so you know nimble. It's a, it's a difficult um, thing. So what I think we're really counting on is some more herd immunity. We're counting on the fact that we're gonna not flood the system and we're counting on the fact that maybe we can figure out some good treatments to get through what happens. Do you kind of liken this to finding the cure for the common cold in a lot of ways? Cause it is kind of, yeah. And is there a cure or is there just a way to go, you know, we all have to be together. I mean, there's another, another cost that I'm thinking about just watching my animals and, you know, they're watching the neighbor's dogs play. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, they're so bummed out. You know, <laughs> they're not going over there. Um, and there is a cost to us as a society too. You know, how are we managing our ourselves and our um, emotional health and what are we doing for our futures? We do need to really be thinking about how we're going to manage this as it goes. And if we have better treatments and we have a better way to deal with it, you know, we've got treatments that you can deal with for the common cold now that help us <laughs> get through it. So looking at it that way and trying to figure out, um, you know, a, a manageable plan is, is I think the first step. Yeah. And, um, Go ahead. I'm, I'm curious um, because you, you, I'm assuming you know animal behavior pretty well uh, with society shutting down. A lot of people were talking the other day about, um, animals coming closer into the city for food, a lot of like strays and stuff being more bold with their actions. Are there steps we need to take to protect our animals from coyotes, from uh, other animal, like other strays that are probably going to be a little bit more bold with their moves? Or is this kind of more uh, hype in terms of people just freaking out? I think, I mean, it's sort of a distraction. <laughs> Um, I don't know that people are going out as much with their pets, you know, so there's all of that. If you're leaving your pets in a backyard, it's never a good idea if it's a smaller dog or, you know, the, I mean, coyotes and things are, they're around already. They're already there. Um, so these are, I, I, there isn't a particular reason why they're going to suddenly be coming into the city more for us or doing more um, looking than they were before. Um, we're just not around as much and maybe they'll be happy where they are. I don't see that as a huge concern. I think people should you know, be always aware that yes, a, a coyote will take out a small dog and it can, you know, I've seen some pretty impressive cats against coyotes, but um, you know, they're, they will take out those smaller animals. So you do want to watch them and make sure that you're vigilant. I mean, I know it's a time of distraction right now and we're all like on our, on our phones, on our, you know, devices, but take some time because it's good for you anyway. If you're, you have your pet in your yard, go out in your yard if you can be with your pet, you know, don't just have them out there and use your animal as a source of joy and nature and connection. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the things that people are saying, you know, should we get rid of our pets? I'm like, oh my gosh, this is not a time to get rid of that one source of joy, love. And they're not interested in going. And my dogs do not care. Really. They looked at the neighbor's yard playing, but otherwise they're just like really <laughs> happy if we're sitting here on the couch. Yeah. Yeah. They want to be with me. And it's just really, really pleasant. I mean, for people to think about that kind of thing or, or even getting rid of their pets because they can't afford to feed them or take care of them that way. Um, I did, I did, did say that we, you know, through the, 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 the Royal Animal Health University, we've got, um, uh, you know, some other, other types of, um, uh, diets. I've been trying to help people through my clinic with things that if you've got leftovers, yes, you can. People have always said, don't feed your animals leftovers. It's like, actually, yes, you can. <laughs> um, just take it slow, mix it in with the food. Don't wait till you're completely out of food before you suddenly have to feed a whole full meal of leftovers. Use your food and mix in some other things into it that animals can deal with. And then you can save some money and it can work out till you get through this. Well, and not giving it to them all at once is because you don't want to get diarrhea. So you, you get their systems used to it, but you, you should watch what you're giving them, right? You can't give them high fat or any sugar. It has to well, be more like the meat. Yeah, and the vegetables. high fat doesn't bother me quite as much. You know, you want to work into it a bit, but so if you think you know, ancestrally, what they can handle is one thing, what they're able to in your house and your pet is a, is a little bit different, but they can very 
quick ramp up a relatively high fat, high protein diet because that is their ancestral diet. The sugars are a little bit more <coughs> troublesome and we see problems with sugar um, in terms of different carbohydrates. You know, if they're, they can, like dogs can process things like, you know, potatoes and, and our leftover pasta and things like that. You can mix that in as a source of calories, but it will cause some inflammation. It will change things and it changes the bacteria in the biome. You might see some loose stool, but so, you know, if you can add in, I tell people, even if you're wanting to increase calories, a couple of pats of butter is not a bad way to go for, you know, a, a 30 or 40 pound dog. It can help them get a little bit more calories. So um, try not to uh, underestimate what your um, what you have in your pantry that you could feed to sort of help get them through. Mix it in with the food you're feeding now to get you through. So you, maybe you can get six extra meals or 10 extra meals per week, something like that by going halvesies on things. Wow. I and love remember that. that in our country, we're already overfeeding our pets. So just so you know, if you're listening to me, 50% of you are significantly overfeeding your pet. If your pet is pooping more than once a day and it's an adult, you're probably overfeeding your pet. Just cut down on how much you're feeding. Yeah, we did that actually too, so that we could kind of deal with the portions. I'm like, you know what? They're not eating it at all. They're fighting us to eat their food. So yeah. the second they don't want to eat, we pull it now. And yeah. then we also give them um, a third less of what we were giving them. Mm -hmm. And I was like, we were, over, we, we realized we were overfeeding them ours, ourselves too. Because we want to, we love them. It's manja, manja, yeah. you know, we want to feed you. that's our connection. But the fact is back off on that. And you're, if you're home, then, okay, let's do some other things. Let's do some games. Let's get them to spin around. Let's get them run down the hallway. This is a great opportunity to teach your dog all of the fun television tricks that you've seen, you know? You've got options and it's really fun if you have a difficult animal or an animal who's always been like when, when you're going out to dinner, they're like, are you going to bring your dog, you know, versus you're coming to dinner. Can you please bring your dog? Your dog's so fun. Yeah. Like, let's make that pet now. You've got time. Let's treat, teach the dog new things. You don't need a trainer for, you know, thousands of years. We trained our dogs ourselves. So just do it the way you do it. Use little treats of something or other, whatever. A um, little piece of cheese or something and start teaching your dog fun new things. Don't go over the old things or they'll be like, we're so bored, you know, like teenagers. <laughs> their eyes at you. Like, don't go over sit and stay. Just don't just ignore those and go to a whole bunch of new things. You can teach fun things, roll over, go get me the newspaper, you know, whatever. I love that. We talked about this last week with um, one of our guests, Trevor Moad. Um, he's a uh, an amazing, amazing guy. And he said, let's win the weight. And he works with athletes. Yeah. And he was talking about how they're all focusing on winning the weight. And, you know, you're right, we can make use of this time. And even things like that, we're going to come out of this so much better if we focus on the good. And first of all, when you start to realize you're overfeeding your pet, now you're going to save money on feeding mm -hmm. your pet. And <clears throat> your pet's going to be healthier because of that. Mm -hmm. um, we're all going to learn how to cook for ourselves and how to make do. And we're going to realize we don't need as many supplies and as many things that, I mean, we need the essential supplies, but you know, we're overstocked on so many different things and we have so much junk that is like, you know, just cluttering our lives. I feel like if we really look at the positives that are coming out of this, I was saying earlier, my dad's diabetic and I'm sit, I'm able to sit with him now and see the patterns of why his sugar is roller coastering and I'm able to guide him through it. And now when we come out of this, my dad's blood sugar is going to be completely changed for the first time in 50 years. It will be completely under control because we have this time. And so it's not the way we wanted it to happen, but I do think that it could be happening for a reason. We all have been going way too hard for way too long. Um, yeah. I saw it after my brain surgery. I realized that we needed to slow the ride down a little bit and really focus on our health. And now that's what this is doing. It's going to make us start focusing on our health, the people that are most important in our lives, um, and having those meaningful moments and, you know, playing cards. Like I was playing cards with my dad yesterday and my mom, and we had fun and we kept our distance, but um, you know, there are a lot of good things that can come out of it. It's just preparing for, you know, being educated, first of all, on how yeah. to be safe, um, and, and preparing for, you know, what could be. Yeah. And I think it's also just recognizing it's sort of that idea, like, what are our assets? <laughs> yeah. What are our assets? What do we have right now? Okay. You know, there are definitely <laughs> a lot of people out there that are sick coughing, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, that are, that are not going that are doing, having 
trouble with this horrible thing. You know, let's try to support them by making the world a better place for when they get through this. Let's do this for each other. Let's do this for our communities. Our, our connection right now is so much more important than it's ever been. And we have to do it from six feet away. Okay. Yeah. But we should be doing this. The communities that we have formed in this should, I want them to last. I'm, I'm hoping, you know, that we are a, a, you know, a species that can see some of the things that are getting better because of what we're doing and, and go, Hey, we want that. We want that. I want to see the air cleaner. I want to see my children a little more engaged. I want them off of their, you know, devices and interacting with me. My, my two kids made the most delicious curry lamb dinner last night. I, I was really busy and dealing with patients and I came out and it was like, they just like, yeah, we just did this. We, we figured it out. And, you know, I don't know that they would have done that four weeks ago. Yeah. So it's just, it's just a thing. And we're, you know, we're interacting. Think of the pro- projects that you've Wanted that you can't do and animals i think part of it is you know we can connect and feel still connected to the earth and each other through an animal connection mm-hmm. um, that's why they're in our lives and we should feel that connection to nature we should feel that connection to the planet and we should understand what's happening here is it's telling us we're out of balance and that's what i deal with every day when i deal with the wild health of an animal i see you know an ear infection and i go well that just means something's out of balance in this animal I see, you know, a urinary tract infection or whatever. It's it's nutritional. It's it's biome. It's the bacteria. It's that we're over sterilizing or not clean enough or what. But it, it it's all about balance. The good and the bad have to have to balance each other. Yeah. We tend to go all full stream, full full speed ahead in one way or the other. And we need to remember deep breath, balance. You know, get get things to be a little healthier. So that's what I'm trying to instill in my children, myself, and with my my pets here. You know, they're basically just lying around. Everybody's lying around. I don't know. Can, <laughs> I saw your cat come into the frame there. earlier. Cat comes in. They're all just lying around. They're so happy that we're here. And I know. You no, know, there is that. I don't know what the future will hold. I have no idea. It's terrifying for all of us to be out and in. We don't know. But let's try to have the con- consistency of our pets to help us have that joy. And don't worry so much about every little detail. Yeah. I think also how you know, how things aren't just problems in certain places, like how interconnected we are. Like this is really showing us how infallible we are and how it's not just their problem. It's everyone's problem. And I think that's going to be good for us in the end. It's been a shocker in a way, because you usually always, I mean, I think all of us have that sort of escape mode, like, well, if it's really bad here, I can always, you know, call someone or do an escape or go. It's like, everyone's in the same boat. Yeah. There's no escaping. There's no escaping this. We have to just, all of us go, all right, we are warriors. We can win this. We will survive. We will do the best we can do and see what happens because that is life. That's where we are. I and I don't that. think we've been challenged like this in a while anyway, as a society or as the globe, we've been allowing things to sort of go or not go. And I think that's been, it's, it's showing itself to be trouble. Yeah, definitely not in modern times. Stephen? I'm curious uh, because I just looked up the fact that Adoptions have gone up by two to three times in the past week since coronavirus. Well, it's it's great and it's also scary because, you know, like Christmas, they go up two to three times as well. But then after a lot of people don't keep Mm -hmm. the dog in this moment, like I think it's so important that people train their dogs. You obviously have had pets, I'm assuming all your life. What's something that you would recommend to new owners to help train their dogs? Is there like a video or a book that that has really helped you that you could recommend to new owners? Yeah, I really like Tamar Geller's take on it. Um, I think she does such a great job um, with, she did the um, uh, 30 days to a well-mannered pet. And then she's also got the love dog. Those are, it's just such a nice method and you can do it yourself pretty easily. So her her work has helped me so much. It helped me with my dogs. Um, and in addition, the, the things that I teach an owner right away, like the first things that I want them to learn, um, you know, the pets to learn when they're in the house is, and you can actually train cats too, by the way. <laughs> what you want to do, but um, there's a there's a good cat book out there. I wish I could remember the name of it about teaching your cat, um, the trainable cat. I think it is. Um, anyway, I, I tell owners if they've got a young dog or an old dog, if you've got a new dog in your house, the first thing you really want to have control of really is their mouth. So you want to teach them to open their mouth to drop it, but it's not really teaching them to drop something. It is really teaching them when you say something, you say you know drop it that they open their mouth. And the, and the best way to do that is not to put something in their mouth and, and say, you know, I say drop it and have them, you know, they, then that means fight me for that and drag it out of your mouth. 
what you want is you put your hand over their muzzle and as you say drop it you just push your finger into their mouth a little bit and push down on their tongue and and they will open their mouth because they're irritated by it. like why is your finger in there they, ah they open their mouth and then you say drop it at the same time they're actively opening their mouth and you're putting your finger in their mouth and you just do that 10 times a day for you know the next 10 days of quarantine and by <laughs> the 10th day all of a sudden you say drop it and they go they just start ah, opening their mouth because they're like that's what always happens when she says drop it something irritates my the side of my mouth a finger goes in there and i i open my mouth if you're confident with the dog if you're if you're worried the dog's gonna bite you okay don't do that <laughs> maybe think twice about what you're doing but um but if you're confident in the dog and basically you're just going over the top of the head and moving your hand down over the muzzle and just putting your you know your first or second finger just right in behind the canine and just poke in there with the lip and they open their mouth they just do and so that's a really good sort of a safety tip it's a good thing to, to have control then from across the room as they're grabbing something that's maybe toxic or in an alley you know whatever and you say drop it they they open their mouth and things fall out and that can be really helpful. Wow. Never thought of that. Yeah. I think it's one. great that people are adopting right now because again, this next layer of um, protections that they will inevitably have to put into place. So they're going to have to shut shelters down. And I think they're already shutting some shelters down. At Pause Chicago, I know they're doing all their, all their adoptions sort of with a virtual adoption. Um, they're not allowing people to come in, but you can see them virtually. They have a pretty good setup to do that on the website. And then basically, I think, again, it's, it's a wipe down and you pick up and it's a drive through and you just go for it. Yeah. I do think it's a good time for, <clears throat> for a lot of people to have a pet. People have been thinking about having a pet or going for it right now. I have a lot of my friends and clients who have lost animals. Like I'm home. I may as well have a puppy, Yeah, you know, and train it right now. So there is that. And it, and it can be a good thing. I think if you've had an animal in your home for even a month, it, it's going to be harder for someone to Sorry, again, I don't know if I'm it's going to be harder that. for what? Um, it'll be harder to let go of a pet if you're really if you're in quarantine with an animal for you know it's going to be for a while. You can't just suddenly let them go now. So yeah, the commitment I think is going to be hopefully a little bit better. The, the time to take care of them is better. I think it's it's our best shot to me right now at adoptions increasing. It's not quite like a holiday where they can do it for a couple of days and be like, my life's back to normal. I'm not going to do this. It's like, no, you'll have some time to mess around with this animal and get really attached. Yeah. The bonding will be real. So Maria, we're getting a dog at the house. No, <laughs> <laughs> we have enough to deal with. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Meanwhile, I realized I didn't bring water into the studio and I'm like choking to death. I don't know if I over sterilized it in here, but all of a sudden I have this like, you know, like when you feel like you have dust in your throat and you can't get yes. it out, I'm like coughing to death over here. But um, mm -hmm. the one last thing that I was thinking of is bathing more frequently. I'm mm -hmm. sure that that's a good deterrent until we know better whether we can spread it to the dog or the dog can spread it to us because we're all patting it and contaminating it. But how much is too much? Well, and that's where I think also your your nice oil-based shampoos can really help you so that you're not going to really denude the body's natural oils and sebaceous material, and you're not going to necessarily kill all the bacteria that's deep on the skin. What we're really trying to do when we're bathing is deal with the, you know, how, how much of the um, <clears throat> bacteria or things are just sitting on the surface and not dying, and they're just being carried from place to place. So um, you can certainly bathe if you if you feel like you need to bathe every week. Um, or if you need to do a spot bathe or areas where they're pet a lot, you can take a washcloth with something like a Murphy's oil soap or um, the um, Castile soap or some of those oil-based soaps. They're inexpensive. They're probably under your sink right now. You can you can get a washcloth all you know very wet, put some of the soap on there, and just and you can rub that down and around. Um, so Yay. you can you can end up cleaning them. Um, in, in just certain areas and don't have to do the whole body. You don't have to do the underside or, you know, whatever. Maybe you can just get them cleaned in certain areas and do that every day. Um, it's, it, it can be fine doing that in between going back and forth, you know, again, to people that have been exposed or not exposed. It's a, it's a little bit of a tricky go, but I do feel like that can help. And certainly just regular soaps and washing can make a big difference. I think that's a great idea. What about walking your dog right now? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, I, I, if, if it's allowed, yeah, I would be, I would be going out and doing that. You're not going to have contact with anyone. Um, so it's not a bad idea. It can be a good meditative moment for everyone just to get out and do something mm -hmm. that feels normal. Enjoy nature, see how quiet things are, 
um, you know, take deep breaths and, and, you know, log those into your brain so that you can meditate a bit. It's, um, it's a good time to just really appreciate what's around you. And I think that's what, that's what the pets do. They certainly get a lot from the smells and what's outside. If you can't get outside to walk your pet or do that, or if your pet isn't really, there isn't a good place for you to do that, you know, in a, in a high rise or in a city and just going in and out is problematic. Um, see if you can even get at some point when you do go out, just collect some sticks and twigs and stones and some dirt from somewhere and just bring it in and get it into a, you know, an old cardboard box or something that you can take out pieces of things and have them smell them at different times of day. Smell is so important for a dog and being shut in with all of our cleaners and disinfectants. I mean, it's probably overwhelming. Yeah. Try to have an area where you can have a window open and clear space, clear air, because the cleaners and all the things that we're doing will settle in the lower half of the room, basically where the dog's wandering around and we may not even smell it anymore. So remember, they're going to be overwhelmed with all of these cleaners and things that we're doing and be careful with that. It can be toxic to them. And then also remember that their smell and their world is so defined by getting interesting smells. It's that's their books, you know, so bring things in for them if you can and let them smell something new. That's a great idea. I love that. Yeah. Cause we, we live you know, where we can walk our dogs, but I didn't think about that. Cause every time I take them on walks, if Kevin's impatient, when they're stopping to smell, I get, oh, Kevin, no, that's their moment. You have to let them have their time. They need to sniff and, and taste things and like bite things and whatever. I know and my so, daughter said like their, their novels, their books that she like, that's sort of a magazine. She's just taking a quick sniff. She's like, Ooh, there's like Anna Karenin over there. She's like going for it. You know? <laughs> I love it. But yeah, what a great idea to collect some twigs and things for yeah. them. I love that. That's good. Well, I wonder, um, you know, we always ask everybody at the end of the show, what are you doing to get better every day? And I think now it's even most important to ask people this. So is there something new that you're doing every yeah. day to get better, Dr. Royal? I actually have been, I, I never have done this before. I've never, I've never meditated um, in a particular way. I have my own meditative way of dealing with an animal that I know is me. Like uh, before I start with an animal with before every case, either right outside the room or even in the room with the owners, I'll be deep breath, connect a little bit and think about what that is. And that's sort of my meditative um, medical process, but actually taking time and breathing and stopping. Just, I feel like what this has said to me is stop. Yeah. Breathe. <clears throat> and that's helped me. And it's not more than five minutes. I'll tell you, my sister forced me to do it. <laughs> and it's here for girl power. So thanks, sis. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Because she just said, look at you. you even now you're, you're worrying and running around because you have all these patients and all these clients and all these things. Like, I want to fix everything. Yep. And she said, you have to do this for yourself. And so she's right because my heart rate can't go that fast all the time. Um, yeah. But that's one. And then the other is, is the soil, the healthy soil, getting a little bit on me, getting, you know, trying to pay attention to that I'm part of the world and I still am connected to it. I haven't completely, by, by being nervous about this virus, have I then isolated myself from all of the healthy things that the earth has to provide for me. Like, I don't want to be eating canned food and everything forever. I, I need to have fresh things and fresh, you know, bacteria and everything else. So I'm lucky because I can go outside into our yard here and get some dirt. <clears throat> and if I, I could that. roll in it, I would, but it's a little cold to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that, you know, <clears throat> Kevin's last grocery run before quarantine, I said, go buy as many vegetable plants as you can find so we can make our garden bigger because I knew what was coming and I knew that I would rather have fresh vegetables that were growing as much as possible obviously and mm -hmm. <clears throat> today I'm going to go out there put my hands in the dirt yes because of you mm -hmm. and um and yeah I think that's you, there's so much great insight in this in this chat that we've had um, for pets and otherwise. And I really appreciate your time and sharing it with us. And <clears throat> I do believe that the less we focus on the scary things and the more we focus on us getting better in this time and being better and being as bright as we can, because we need as much light as we can right now. I think that's the most important thing to do. I know. I think, and if you have just adopted a new pet, you know, um, yay, kudos to you. 
Um, there's some good information, actually a good information from um, Jennifer Skiff. If you don't know her, you should look her up. Okay. Um, she does a lot with the Humane Society and adoptions. She was helping a lot in Australia, but she has a whole, she just did an article about um, keeping your pets in this difficult time and things like that. And I talked to her about that. So that might be a good resource to you as well as the, as Tamar Geller's book um, to help you do some fun training while you're home. That would be amazing. I love it. Well, Dr. Royal, thank you so oh, much. You, oh, I yeah. should say if you want recipe ideas. Yes, 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 we do. For at home, this is something else I really should be talking about because it's so important to all of my clients. Um, we've been doing it through my clinic, but the animal diet formulator program is one of the things with recipes online for their um, we've, we've come up with ways to mix and match with kibble food and fresh food from home, things like that. So if you're looking at animaldietformulator.com, um, you can, you can go in onto the site and contact us and say, that's specifically what you're looking for. And we'll try to get you some of those recipes. Awesome. Steven, let's put everything she set up in the summary. <clears throat> um, thank you for Got getting that water. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we'll put all of this in the summary, um, links in the summary so that you guys can just click easily and find everything. Awesome. Dr. Royal, thank you. Be safe. You too. And Take we'll, care. we'll try to check back with you again soon. Yeah, fabulous. Nice All to right. talk to you. Nice talking to you too. Take care. I love Dr. Royal. She's the best. <clears throat> and thank you for Steven seeing me suffering in here and getting Kevin to bring me in water. I had like a tickle, you know, you have a tickle. Yeah. I felt it kind of formulating and I'm like, Oh no. And I think it's cause it's so sterile in here. And I'm not used to being around so much Lysol and stuff. Yeah. I mean, we have this, Kevin hooked us up with this great, um, this great new mop. And you know how they have those ones that have the motor in it? This yeah. one's actually just like a spray bottle, but it, you it's just, awesome. It's I know great. we have one too now. It's so quick, and, but it's just like the, the, the pine saw is so potent that I'm just like, I do the room and I'm like, <laughs> I'm glad we do this at the end of the night. So I don't have to work in here. Oh. It's a lot. It's true. You okay over there? Yeah. I just took a deep <laughs> breath, like a really deep breath and it forced out another cough. But I think, um, I think what a great, you know, I love when you're talking to someone and you have a certain thing you want to talk to them about, and then they give you something completely different you didn't even think about. But like, so true. We are also jeopardizing ourselves and the good microbes. So yeah, going out and touching some dirt. And I think, I forget who it was we had on the show that talked about meditating with our feet, our bare feet in the grass. I don't remember, but I know somebody said that. Yeah. And so what a great way to kind of ground us, because I do think it is something that I'm focusing on so much is, okay, at this point we know we're in it, right? Like before it was like, we have to let everybody know we're in it. <laughs> <I'm> like <laughs> I was like trying to get everyone to take this seriously. <clears throat> and everybody was like, really, really, really? And then I'd have to tell them like, the world is ending, get your shit together. But now we all know we're in third place, okay, in, in the world right now in terms of corona cases. And we know this is going to get worse before it gets better. How much do we really need to consume, right? Obviously we wanna know <clears throat> the latest things and we wanna be up to date, but I think Trevor Moed's negativity diet is so important. And I think that, um, Dr. G uh, Gabby Bernstein's choose again method for when bad thoughts come in, because I start to like go down paths sometimes where I'm thinking, you know, with my dad this weekend, you know, what if these are early stroke signs because he was dizzy and I started panicking and I started freaking out. And then you have to realize like, okay, you freaking out, isn't going to help anybody. It's only going to lower your immune system too. And so I think that we have to start putting into play all of these tools that we've learned along the way. <clears throat> and what Dr. Royal is saying is like so important too, is we need to have some good microbes. So putting your hands in some dirt, not very hard to do meditating and keeping ourselves strong and strong minded, um, is really, really important right now and trying to stay calm. Like I said, it's like, we know it's, it's definitely uncertain, but we also know what's kind of certain. And if you can focus on being your best self <clears throat> in this critical time, you will affect so many more people. And of course you will come out of this better. Yeah. I, I think she talked a lot, a lot about, I mean, she talked a lot about some pretty cool stuff, but I liked 
what I liked a lot is that like a lot of people are wondering whether it's passing from humans to animals. Yeah. And the fact is, is that we don't know enough yet to know that it, because it's also, we yeah. don't know what's going to happen when it meets <clears throat> mass acceleration. Does this, does the coronavirus actually become a different virus at a certain point? Does it evolve like bacteria does? I don't know enough about it to say mm. that, but what's smart is, <clears throat> I mean, if it can be transferred to surfaces, it can be transferred to the fur of your pet. So if you're walking down the street and some dude walks up and ruffles your dog's fur, that probably means that you might have something on your dog. So when yeah. you pet your dog, you might have like it's just tough because I think it's it's weird for me because this feels exactly like this feels exactly like if somebody wrote a Black Plague movie <laughs> in 2020. And not to not to the point of like all the deaths and everything because like Trust me, this is not as bad as the Black Plague yet. If it gets there, I don't know. I don't know anything about the Black Plague. But but, but just the fact that <clears throat> nobody knows what's going on. Nobody knows what the information is. Everyone's spreading false information. <clears throat> and everyone's just kind of wandering around trying to figure out their own home remedies for like what's, what's happening. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting to watch the information age. Like through social media, through yeah. Facebook, through text messages, through the fact that everyone's still live streaming, through the fact that we can still do this show, um, it's it's very surreal. I feel very surreal right now. It is surreal. I walked into my kitchen this morning, and I heard, you know, the DW. I think it was the DWP will not be asking you to pay your bills if you can. Please pay them, but <clears throat> no one's expecting us to pay bills now. No one's expecting us to cover our rent and don't worry, we're going to take care of this. And, and you're realizing this isn't just for a select, this is like global. And you're like, wait, am I, am I in a dream? Like, is this really happening? It's so surreal. So surreal. Um, I'm really, I'm really worried about India. Like that is that right now, like for, for us in America, we have a lot of things in place that will, force people to stay home and a lot of things like that. But in, in India, you have one of the highest populations on earth. They just started getting cases two days ago and the streets are packed full of people 24 seven, even after they've initiated a quarantine kind of status. So I'm very worried about how, how quickly it's going to spread. And also, you know, you can block travel, but you can't block all travel. So, you know, there's there's still places that haven't been affected by this yet. So, like, if there is a delay, just like right now we're experiencing, okay, they think that it's going to be the worst in America in terms of cases in two weeks from now. So everything's kind of on this, like, staggered schedule where China is now experiencing their first drop and then rise. <clears throat> and then you have Italy, who is all their cases are kind of shooting up because it's now the death toll that's shooting up. But now America is following behind that with its first rise. And then... China's going to have its second rise soon. Meanwhile, Italy's going to calm down and America's going to shoot down and then it's just going to shoot up somewhere else and it's just going to be all over the place. It's whack-a-mole. It kind of is. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. It's um, really scary. But but we can be better together. But we can be better together and we can choose where to put our focus. Okay? And I think that if you can sliver your focus and like look at it like a pie and just sliver just a small piece to making sure you're gathering the information you need to be prepared and be in the know and then the rest of your pie is how can i get better in this time we're going to be so much better off mentally emotionally physically you know i'm making sure i'm you know getting some exercise in i'm making sure i'm getting my meditation in i'm making sure i'm moving the ball forward in my life as much as i can and helping the people around me. But like, I'll tell you, people are still clueless. So in Florida, our friend Joe literally texted me this yesterday. <laughs> Is it that video of the people being like, oh, I'll spring break? You no, know. forget all those oh, no. clowns. Here is, here is it. He said to me, yesterday, have... <laughs> this is so messed up. Have we turned a corner yet or is there an end in sight to it or are we just fucked? And I said, I was like, what is he talking about? I go, oh, so fucked. Oh, God. <laughs> we haven't even started. I said, you know, the horror show is going to begin in April, early April. And he's like, for real? And I'm like, what are you thinking? 
I mean, talk about negativity diet. He's not even watching anything, so he has no idea. So I have to kind of breathe a little reality into him. But it's just it's <clears throat> from it's really scary um, for the elderly. It's really like, scary for everybody but the poor elderly. So here is my new plan, by the way. Do you want to know my new idea? Yeah. Um, my new idea is to harness our, you know, one of our hosts once told us recently that we have a roster of hosts that rivals the size of the NBA. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the other day I was thinking, okay, so now the mask thing for doctors and nurses seems to be getting dealt with, right? We helped Bethany raise a little bit of money. Bethany then of course was killing it and she took it up to a whole other level. And so that is being dealt with, but we also now have to shift gears and start to see, okay, where are the other needs? Because the hospitals are starting to find her and they're ordering and whatever. Okay. I thought about the elderly that can't be visited and how sad that makes me. So I figured today I'm going to write a little note to all of our hosts and ask them if they would be interested in <clears throat> FaceTiming with people who can't get visitors, right? Like they could read to them. They could chat with them. They could ask them about their life story. We have so much to gain from, from conversations with the elderly. I've always had an affinity and like, I've always been so connected to them at any family party. I was always with the older people. And so, um, I think it's, I think it would be really cool to have our host step up and I know they would love it. I think it's a good idea just for the fact that like everything that everything I hold dear in terms of knowledge of the past came from my grandparents. Like I feel like everyone's talking about how woke they are nowadays. Everyone's like stay woke, but it's like, yeah, oh. stay woke. How about wake up to history and wake up to what people actually, what the problems people actually faced 60 years ago. <clears throat> and I think this would be a great way to get people acclimated with that. And like, even if people wanted to do a podcast out of it or stream it, like conversations with people who grew up from a different time are really interesting. Yeah. Like you, our gen <clears throat> you know, people don't realize that like our generation has been at war in terms of the Afghanistan war and the Iraq war, but that's not really the same as like world war two and people who were in world war two. Like it's not the same. It's not the same as Vietnam either very very different societal differences and very very different uh types of war types everything. of wars yeah so you know people should really educate themselves and learn yeah. about that part of our history again what a great opportunity yeah so <clears throat> that's kind of my next thing that i'm working on is figuring out if our hosts are on board and then i'm working with cedars to see if they can connect us with people that you know are lonely and need that that's dope so that's a good idea yeah well, I'm constantly thinking of how we can we can help people. And, you know, some people don't have money, but they have time. And they, you know, they can do so much. And it's just, it usually takes somebody to lead an effort for everybody to join and be able to feel like they contributed, you know? Well, if there's anything you're good at, it's 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 yelling at people until they get into it. Not yelling at people in a bad way. Sorry, Maria, that <laughs> came out wrong. Came out wrong. What? No, but like when you were talking about... Um, the charity fundraiser. Yeah. You can get people riled up and into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know how to do that. Yeah. So I think this is a great cause for you. Yeah. So anyhow, thank you guys again for joining us here on Better Together, the everyday edition through this crisis, <laughs> um, where we're going to talk about the things that we need to talk about, talk to the people that are in the know on everything and, uh, and help us stay grounded and calm and help us to become better versions of ourselves throughout this crisis. We're going to be here every day at 11 a.m. So spread the word, share it with your friends. Just take this link and share. Share it to everybody. Do it. Do it. They got nothing better to do right now. Yeah. And uh, if you want to join us over at Patreon, we would love it. We've been trying to migrate the whole show over there before this um, because we have a lot more we can do in that realm rather than just on YouTube where they won't let me play these amazing clips that I want to play. So please join us over at Patreon. The link is in the summary. You can just click it and join us. 
Do we have any reviews that you needed to read, Stephen, or anything you wanted to talk about before we end? I did want to shout out <coughs> our uh, our third level Patreon subscribers, uh, who are Annette Cozell, Allison Crum, Sean Carbonell, Susan Brockway, Marilena Falaras, Deborah Decker, and Demetra Murphy. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for being friends of the show. Thank you guys. We appreciate it. And right now we're going to be putting up some. Uh, we're trying to figure out what our Patreon schedule is going to be throughout this because, you know, we we. We're doing the show week plus an after show plus a Patreon exclusive episode. But now we're doing five episodes a week for everyone on YouTube. And we want to figure out what we can do for you guys exclusively well. But I feel like in this time, this information is just so vital and we want to get it out to as many people as possible <coughs> without putting any kind of paywall in front of it. Agreed. So we're going to have a few bonuses on Patreon, but come here every single day, Monday through Friday, to get a full show and share it with your friends and send us questions, send us anything that you're like interested in knowing about. Um, please let us know like topics you'd like us to hear about. Cause again, instead of having one topic a week, now we're filling five topics a week and trying to figure out who do we want on the show. So yeah. dream guests, this is the time to reach out cause everyone's at home and we can get them. Exactly. Exactly. And for now guys, thank you for joining us. You can find us on social at Marie Menounos at Stephen Lemieux photo. And remember be nice people make good choices and be present. <laughs>